Hello Unleashers, welcome to another episode of season nine of my podcast, Unleash Your Focus. This season, season nine, specifically is about the experts. What makes them the expert in their field? What is that niche or that expertise that they have that they can share with you? But most importantly, what are they sharing with you in this upcoming season and currently this episode that you can implement in your business to help you in your business? Now, today, I have a very, very special guest. His name is Norman. And he's based in Seattle. Now, Norman is a storyteller and he's also a presentation coach. He's an award winning speaker, a theater and film actor, and he's also an author of a book called The Story Powered Speaker How to Own the Stage and Enchant Your Audience. I'm very excited for Norman to be on our podcast today. He's very passionate about helping purpose-driven entrepreneurs and organizations communicate their story and message more effectively so they can connect with the audience on a most or, or on an emotional level. So I want to thank Norman for taking the time to be on this episode with us and to share his expert knowledge. Hi, Norman. How are you doing? I am doing good. Uh, thank you for having me, Joy. How are you doing today? I'm fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, it's having, we're having spring in New Zealand, so it's all good. You are based in the States, yeah? Yes, I'm here in Seattle, Washington, uh, here in the States, yes. Can you tell people a little bit about you? Where did you grow up? Where did you come from? Sure, sure. Well, I actually grew up in this area, in the, the greater Seattle area, and um, uh, you know, went to elementary and, and high school here, went to college at the University of Washington. Um, and then, you know, a few years after college, I uh, traveled for a bit, lived abroad for a while. Actually, both of my parents were from other countries. My m mom was from uh, Quebec City, Canada. My dad was from Scotland. So I think I had oh, wow. it in me. And they both came to the United States and that's where they met and uh, had me. That's pretty and cool. so I think um, there was, it was, in, it's in my DNA to, to get out there in the world um, as I think it is for a lot of uh, people down where, where you are in New Zealand, right? Um, maybe not at this moment with, with the COVID <laughs> situation, but in general. Uh, and anyway, I lived abroad. I lived abroad in Japan for a year and in uh, Barcelona, Spain for five years. Wow. And uh, that was a, a wonderful experience. And uh, then, then returned back to the Seattle area. And um, what else is there to say about me? I, I also, you know, in, in this realm of storytelling, um, you know, I have a, uh, a background as a, a speaker, um, a theater performer. I had my one minute of film fame um, in the early 2000s. I played um, opposite Academy Award winner Christian Bale in the oh. psychological thriller The Machinist. Oh. Um, I could tell a story about that, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, he's a really nice guy. It was, it was really nice to meet him and, and um, um, exciting to be in that film. And um, yeah, and so, I, you know, basically over the past year, I think like a lot of people, I uh, had a little spare time and I ended up writing this book, The Story Powered Speaker, uh, which... Um, you know, uh, contains some of the uh, the material from my the work storytelling workshops that I've done in the past, and some mm -hmm. of the material I use when I'm working one on one um, with coaching clients. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And then I also I've I've also had my own podcast, the Hell Yes Life podcast, and there's a story connected to that. But we'll see if we get to it. And um, and many of the interviews. Uh, on that podcast, which is maybe similar to you, I've interviewed a lot mm -hmm. of amazing and inspiring entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, it was their stories that really stuck out, you know, like years later, even I would be thinking about, um, you know, some of my guests inspiring stories. And so um, when I got into researching the, the book, um, I started to understand why storytelling was, was so uh, powerful. But I'll stop there for a moment and, and uh, let you ask me some more questions. That is amazing. I love that. So you say, obviously, you've, you well-traveled, and do you think that, maybe in that moment you didn't think of it, but do you think that traveling maybe formed you as a storyteller? Because mm. if, if I think back, like I, I've also traveled a bit here and there, not as much as you, but I lived in America, and I'm originally from South Africa, living in New Zealand, so, you know, oh, I've, okay. I've, I've had my country shifts, yeah. and yeah. just thinking, like, one of all my, some of my best stories is about me you know, traveling. Do you think that helped you with your storytelling mission? That's a really good question. I think definitely. Yeah. Like, because when you travel, like if you're sitting at home and just going to work and coming home, um, 
uh, then um, there's not as much opportunity for stuff to happen. And uh, when you're traveling, like any any person's trip is is going to be a, a mini hero's journey of sorts, right? There's going to be amazing days where like you see some of the most amazing things you've ever seen in your life. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and we can get into this a little bit. A lot of the, the best stories are really about when things don't work out the way you want them to. And you get into some serious trouble, like the time when I was in Thailand and I lost my passport and I thought I was going to miss oh, my plane dear. back to Japan where I was living. So um, you know, those, those are the ones that, that people tend to get hooked into. So, um, yeah, traveling has definitely, um, uh, contributed to my storytelling. What do you think is that something that hooks people into listening to a story? Because I mean, we all know that there can be some terrible storytellers out there. Like I've listened to stories and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so boring. But what is yeah. that something that hooks somebody into actually hang on your lips when you tell a story? Yeah, I don't want to oversimplify it. I think it's more than just this, but one yes. of the tips that I have in my my book is to get in trouble because um, you know somebody that is and this related to what I was just talking about there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, if you think about any any movie, any book, any um, you know mystery series, any Netflix or Amazon or whatever series that yes. bingeable series that you've uh, that ever spent time with. Um, what makes it you make, what makes you want to turn the page? What makes you want to go on to the next episode? And I, you know, I think it, it's almost a flaw in us as humans that we're so interested in trouble, but it's trouble, right? It's like, what's going to happen? Oh no, the, you know, this thing's <laughs> happened to the main character. Are they going to make it through? Are, you, are they going to find out who the, the, uh, the murderer is, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, yeah, tr trouble, uh, not to say that that's, the, the only thing, and trouble doesn't have to be like um, uh, space battles, like in Star Wars or something, right? Or, uh, or down in, you know, in your part of the world, the, uh, the Lord of the Rings, right? It doesn't have to be an epic quest to destroy the <laughs> ring of power, but um, it can be something like somebody was, was um, uh, mentioning the other day, a story about how they had spilled coffee on their shirts and they were about to, you know, uh, be a, a live in person. And they had about 20 minutes to go down to the shirt store and get a new shirt. Right. That's, that's trouble too. Right. Yeah. And so, um, that would be, that would be one recommendation. It's not the only thing, um, we can, we can also talk about just anything that, uh, that happens in our lives. Um, mm -hmm. it doesn't need to just be the troublesome things. Uh, but, um, but that's, that's one potential tip there. I like that because it is. And now that I think about it, every time I read a book or I listen to something, it's like, that's it like, oh, what happened now? It's that trouble. It does. It just draw you, right? This it's just as humans, it just draws you in. It does see. And, and even just right now, there was a car alarm that went on outside and, uh, and it, it stopped luckily, but if it hadn't, then that would have been a little bit of trouble. And now I start to recognize those things as not like, Oh no, it, this is going to ruin everything. It's like, Oh, this, this could be a good story. You know, like maybe there's <laughs> a story here. So it's true. So you, your passion is to help purpose driven entrepreneurs. And I find this fascinating because that's exactly my thing that's literally in my mission statement that I want to help that I, we actually do help uh, purpose-driven entrepreneurs how did you come about having that as your as your avatar or as your ideal client yeah well I think I feel that I'm a purpose-driven entrepreneur as as well and yeah. um and you know as I was talking about with with storytelling being about trouble I mean Again, we don't need to make this stuff up. We don't need to make up car chases or something. We can just be honest here that yes. all of us, you don't get through a human life without struggling, right? And um, and so one of my other tips, which is related, is to just kind of get real, right? And get real and authentic about um, some of the experiences you've had. And I've had some you know, really challenging experiences in my life. And I, I would be willing to bet joy that you probably have too. And, and probably everyone who's listening to this. Exactly. Um, yes. And, uh, and so when you have some of those, you know, I've gone through a lot of personal development and personal growth and so forth. And um, so it's given me, I think, some compassion and, and interest in giving back mm -hmm. and, and wanting to be um, supportive of other people who are, are, are wanting to make a positive difference in the world. And oftentimes the people that want to make a positive difference are people who have had some challenges that they yeah. themselves need to overcome. Yes. I love that. 
And it is so true. And sharing your story, because it's quite amazing. Like I've shared my story with quite a few people. And I mean, I don't have like a massive wow story, but just the people that I've shared my story with. And they're like, they relate. And it's interesting because the other day I was in a women's um, networking group meeting and there was like literally like 50 other women in there. We were just networking on Zoom, having fun. And it was quite fascinating to hear because and then the one lady raised her hand. She's like, can you guys hear the pattern? everybody here have the same story as in the same concept like the same struggle and the challenges it's just Mm. it's a different Mm -hmm. story but it's yet the same and like and I I clicked and I was like oh wow it's actually so incredibly true you know and this is like 50 women across the world all in different countries and yet we share that same story which is quite amazing actually yeah yeah it sounds like you've uh, found your tribe or built your tribe there and and that they uh, exactly. It's that the word relatable, right? Yeah. Relate, we can relate to each other and, and story, storytelling is, is, um, it's the, it's one of the oldest forms of communication. It's thousands of mm. years old. It, uh, it, it predates facts, figures, and data yeah. by a, a long shot. And mm. it accesses a different part of the brain, mm. um, that facts, figures, and data access the neocortex. Yes. Um, but storytelling can get to the emotional center of the brain, the, the limbic brain. Yes. And, uh, that's actually where decision-making takes place. We'd like to think that we're rational beings, uh, but we're largely emo- kind of well, emotion sure. driven uh, <laughs> beings. And so, um, yeah, that's where we really relate, can relate to each other on a heart, uh, heart to heart human level. Yeah, that's so true. So this podcast is about also, you know, inspiring entrepreneurs to become entrepreneurs, or when you are stuck in the in your business, and you, you know, moving forward, what is the type of advice that you can give somebody if they feel like they're stuck? what advice can you give somebody? I mean, I guess it would be a little bit uh, too, too uh, stereotypical of me to say, tell your story. Um, but let's see if they're stuck, if they're kind of like, uh, y- you know, but stuck, stuck is, uh, I, again, I, one of the reasons I kind of went back and forth for a little while uh, between um, wanting to help people um, follow their passion or tell their story, follow their passion, tell their story. And then I and then last year came, 2020 came along and um, I, um, you know, obviously the pandemic uh, is something that we've all experienced. Uh, I also had a personal health issue come up and, uh, and all these things, it was, there was a day where I had, I had to have a minor surgery actually. Okay. And, um, and my leg was up on a leg pillow one day I was lying in bed and, and I, uh, I just remember staring down at looking at my bandaged up leg. And I was like, I'm going to help people tell their story because um, normally when we're following our, pa- trying to follow our passion, trying to look great on Facebook, you know, um, you know, trying to celebrate our successes all the time, mm-hmm. these things that these obstacles and challenges that come up, they, they feel like they're getting in the way all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we turn it around and look at these challenges is sort of like, oh, this is part of my story. This is my journey. And, and my journey, what people are interested in is not, hey, um, I was given everything that uh, I needed at birth and then I won. Like, that's mm-hmm. not a great story. Um, you know, people want to hear about how mm-hmm. you overcame your challenges and then hopefully you won. But if you didn't, maybe you learned a lesson too. So I would just, you know, if you're stuck, um, consider this to be a, a, you know, a step on your, on your journey. And yeah. um, just think about where you are and think about, um, gosh, I mean, just even setting aside the storytelling stuff, I would, yeah. I would encourage anyone to pick up the phone and call a friend, you know, call a, a trusted um, advisor, a mm-hmm. colleague, and don't try to do it yourself, you know, yeah. like try to, um, uh, you know, connect in with, with your community, maybe with Joy's community, if you're a part of it. And um, uh, yeah, just know that other people are um, struggling too. Everybody's struggling. I think it's really yeah. important that we all acknowledge that, like, you know, everyone's struggling right now. I mean, yeah. it, and, okay. you know, hopefully having some wins too, yes. but it, I think it can be damaging when we all are still kind of showing our Facebook selves, um, like, hey, look at me, I'm still having a great time. No, come on, we're all struggling. So it's okay, you know, it's okay to, yeah. 
Sure it's that. like it's this weird thing out there at the moment and I think it's people just trying to I don't know maybe put on a brave face but I see so many parts of people and then they and it's like friends of mine and they're like oh my life is great but I actually know them and I know that their life is not great and I'm thinking just yeah. be honest share what you are feeling because everybody is feeling the same thing so yeah. Norman how do you get through your struggles when you're feeling like you're having a really bad day or a bad week or a bad month how do you get through that sure sure and I'll just set aside like well, first I write down my story of the day. I mean, just in, in, in my life, that's what I do is I um, will um, connect with other people in, in yeah. one form or another, you know, okay. that that's, that's what helps the most is yes. to um, talk to hope, you know, hopefully you have someone in your life that you can yes. reach out to and um, just really just, and, and someone that, you know, can listen to you you know, wherever you authentically are yeah. and that you can do the same for them and not that you have to kind of shine it on and say mm -hmm. like, well, Hey, I'm feeling, no, just like for me, I need to dump it all out mm -hmm. and, and go like, Oh my God, this is how I'm feeling today. I just do oh, blah, blah, blah. And then if I can get it all out and I feel like I'm heard, mm -hmm. then maybe I can start to feel like, you know what though, you know, maybe there's, maybe there's something I can do now. Um, yeah. so it's, it's, uh, so that, that, and then, mm -hmm. you know, aside from that, I would say, um, you know, listening to an inspiring podcast like this is, mm -hmm. is another helpful thing you can do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I go to some, you know, online support group meetings, just listening to just again, hearing groups of people, um, you know, whether if maybe you're, if you're in a mastermind group or mm -hmm. some, something else, but I guess the overall answer is, you know, just don't try to do it yourself, connect yes. with others. Yeah, so true. And you know, at mastermind groups are a great way to, you know, to just brainstorm and talk with people, talk it out. So yeah. you say you brain dump in the mornings. Is that something that you do every time, every morning? Or is that only something that you do when you struggle? Well, these are good questions. Um, you know, I have a morning routine and I'm, yeah. I admittedly, I am just adding this back in, but I'm starting to do mm -hmm. some journaling again, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do I do? I do some uh, meditation. Mm -hmm. I do a little bit of exercise on the exercise cycle or go for a walk or something. Mm -hmm. um, and, and now I'm, I'm starting to do some, I, I feel the creative juices flowing again, just yes. very, very recently. It's been, I felt, I felt kind of stuck uh, for, for quite a while myself. Yes. Um, but, uh, uh you, oh, just what adding one extra thing in there to your previous question. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been watching some, some movies about, you know, cre I was uh, watching the, I was watching the doors movie, which I have some mixed feelings about, but then I watched another doors documentary, but, and, and just in general, just like whatever mixed feelings people might have about Jim Morrison, but just like, Oh, mm -hmm. wow. He was a creative person. You know, he's a poet. And that mm -hmm. it started to inspire the creative, um, uh, mm -hmm. the creativity within me as well. So yeah, doing some creative writing in the morning and, um, uh, yeah, meditation, um, uh, and exercise and some creativity. It's amazing how those things work together. It's, it's just, you know, mm. like you, you, you burn your negative energy by exercising and the meditation calms you down and the journaling just brain dump everything. It's, it's actually, I love hearing these things because with my podcast, I've interviewed quite a lot of successful people. And it's amazing that the pattern is there with the successful people. They all meditate. They all do some form of journaling, whether it's like actual writing or talking to people. But it's amazing that the patterns are there. It's amazing yeah. what makes people successful, right? Yeah. 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 And I don't want to overplay like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm perfect at this. I do this every day. No. Then, you know, a, a, yeah. an opposite day might be going right into the news and getting sucked into a rabbit hole about, oh my God, what's going on today. Um, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that, that's, yeah. Uh, that's an ideal morning. Yeah. But it happens, right? I mean, I'm the same. I do journaling too, and I'm not perfect at it. Like there would be weeks where I don't touch it. And then other weeks where I do it every yeah. day, religiously for like, you know, 20 days straight. So it yeah. is, it's a balancing act, right? Yeah. I completely, Absolutely. I completely get that. So we talked about your morning routine, which thank you for that. Cause that was actually one of my questions that I wanted to ask you. So as far as you coaching people, because obviously this is what you do. This is one of your superpowers. What is the framework that you would teach them to write a story? Just like the basic framework. Yeah. I usually start with, um, you know, in both my workshops and working one-on-one -on -one with people, you know, there's many different types of stories you can tell. And so some, sometimes yes. it can be a little bit confusing or daunting about, well, what, where do I even start? You know, yes. like, um, uh, and, 
And, you know, so for example, there's, uh, you know, the client success story or mm-hmm. the, um, uh, there's even a, a kind of a day-to-day story, sort of like a behind the curtain of like, hey, here's, here's how I operate my business. Yeah. Um, people find that interesting. Yes. But I, I usually like to start with the, the, the origin story, sort of the, um, mm-hmm. the why, uh, the why story, you know, the, the, the why you do what you do um, story. And so, um, and where I usually like to start, because, you know, you can easily say, well, I like, I, I love helping purpose-driven entrepreneurs achieve their goals. And I, I, that really lights me up. Um, that's great, but those are kind of just words and maybe they don't connect emotionally. But if you're able to say, yeah, I, I love helping um, purpose-driven entrepreneurs. Um, and the reason why is, you know, when I was seven years old, and then, then you go into a story, and it's actually something happens in people's brains when they start listening to a story mm-hmm. that, um, as, as one other author put it, is you know, the brain starts to relax because it's a very familiar form mm-hmm. of communication. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, good, I can, I, can, I can relate to this. And, um, and so I usually start with my clients um, and having them put a list of their, some turning point moments in their lives. And I, I would, um, you know, invite your, your listeners to do the same. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, write a list of three to five moments in your life where something changed, like maybe something got better, maybe it got worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it was a big moment, maybe it was yeah. a small moment, but it feels significant in your life. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to write the whole story out. You can just write a few words to mm-hmm. remind you of what that story is. And, um, you know, for me, for example, uh, some of the turning point moments in my list are the big speech, you know, yeah. dad coming home from Spain. And, and I know exactly what those mean. And, um, and then I, I usually have, you know, when I'm working with a client, they do it with me. Mm-hmm. If you were doing it on your own, you could do it in the mirror or you could do it with a kind of a story buddy mm-hmm. um, and do some tryouts. Uh, and, and what I'm always looking for is that story that kind of comes alive when you tell it. Yeah. Um, because sometimes there's the stories that you think you need to tell and, but they feel kind of burdensome. And then there's other, maybe sometimes unexpected stories that, that light you up when you tell them. And so I I would do tryouts. Um, and then if, if, once you identify a story, then you can start to apply some of the craft of storytelling, sort of the beginning, middle and end, and then fine tuning them. I like that. Um, I was once in a workshop many, many years ago, like a little one and a half hour workshop on training um, or learning how to tell your story. I can't remember who, but it was like two, three years ago. And one of the things that I remember from this workshop is that when you tell your story, obviously your origin story is important because people get a backstory of you as a person, but also to bring in things like color and smell and, you know, imagine yeah. this carpet look. Is that is that a thing as like just adding in some, I guess, oomph to your story? Can Is that something that you would help people with as well? Yeah. Yeah. That would be in the fine tuning stage. Basically okay. I, you know, try to keep it simple. So, um, you know, yes. actually in, in the heroes, Joseph Campbell's hero's journey, there's 12 steps there. Right. So yes. I, I try to keep it a little simpler than that. Cause that can get intimidating. So I, my, you know, three is a magic number. So yes. um, there's three steps in the process that, and then there's some sub steps or whatever, but nevertheless, um, there's kind of uncovering your story. So that's kind of what we were talking about of finding that, that these moments mm-hmm. um, that, um, that, that kind of come alive, that could be the, you know, the story gold, right? Mm-hmm. And th- then, um, and then we add the, the craft of story and sort of, I have a story structure in the book that a uh, very simple story structure mm-hmm. um, that, uh, that you can apply. And then in the fine tuning stage, um, that is one of my tips is to make a scene. Um, and um, there's a, uh, a podcast host named uh, Kevin Allison. And I took a, a storytelling workshop with him. And he said that one of the, um, mistake isn't the right word, but one of the, the common things that people do when they're um, sort of starting, uh, starting out as far as their storytelling mm-hmm. uh, goes is that they spend uh, too much time in narrative summary and not enough time in scenes. And narrative summary is where you're sort of at this 30,000 foot level, you know, like um, if I said, you know, um, in, in the 90s, I worked for five years for the Gorflex uh, Corporation, 
I was a marketing copywriter, right? And so I'm, st- I'm at, a, at a very high level that's really not engaging people emotionally. But then I can switch to a scene and say, about two year, you know, uh, around the two year mark of me working there, I, um, there was one night and I was in the office and it was dark and I'm working alone in the office when suddenly down the hall, I hear some creaking, a creaking footsteps coming down the hall. And then I hear uh, the sound of a baby crying, you know, or whatever it is. But, um, but that's a scene, right? And when in a scene, we're, we're there with you, right? Yes. And e- maybe even as I said that, maybe that wasn't the greatest scene in the world, but like, maybe you started to picture like being in the office in yes. the dark and, uh, and yeah. hearing those sounds and so forth. And so when we appeal to that sensory language, um, we bring people, that's, that's um, the most uh, effective territory for storytelling. Yes. I really love that because like if, as soon as you started talking, you kind of, you, you can't help yourself. You're imagining the darkness and the baby crying. It just, it just becomes natural almost, you know, in your mind in imagining this. Um, yeah. As you tell yeah. It. So Norman, what do you think is one of the things that contributes to your success? One of the things that contributes to my success, I think that, um, gosh, persistence is maybe one thing. And I, I almost cringe to say that because some days I, I don't feel like I'm persisting, but in the end, I, you know, I might have a period of time where I get kind of glum and sort of lost and sort of like, I I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, but I, but then I kind of pick myself up, brush myself off and start all over again. And, uh, and I've had many times in my life like that. And I just have to give myself a pat on the back for that because, um, you know, and, and anybody out there listening, right. If you're going to, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, if you have your own business, um, especially in this day and age, um, you doubtless will have, you know, days, days like that. Um, maybe now even more than, than usual. And, um, yeah, just encourage, encourage you to kind of just put one foot in, the, in front of the other. I mean, I had a, I had a guest on my podcast, Kathy O'Dowd. She was the first woman to climb Mount Everest from the North and South side. She's actually from South that's Africa so, now that so I cool. think about it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and she, and I said, Kathy, how did you do it? How did you climb to the top of Mount Everest? And she said, well, I just put one foot in front of the other is one step at a time. So, yeah, it's amazing how something so simple can make such a big impact in your life. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Norman, can you tell people a little bit about your coaching program and what is it that you offer to people and how they can get in touch with you and basically join your world? Oh, sure, sure. Um, well, let's see. I'm over at normanjbell.com. Or if you wanted to go straight to the, the book, the book might be a good entry point is mm-hmm. uh, storypoweredspeaker.com. That's storypoweredspeaker.com. Mm-hmm. And um, and basically the, uh, the, the book sort of outlines or goes into more detail about the, uh, the three-step process that I was talking about, mm-hmm. um, the why of storytelling, um, some more details about these fine tuning tips. Mm-hmm. And it also includes a number of um, uh, example stories in there from, from me and, um, and from uh, many of the guests that I had on the podcast. Yes. And actually I'm thinking of one about this make a scene um, tip. There's a, a, a guest that I had on the, the show. His name's Chris Ballou. He was mm-hmm. the um, lead singer of the, the rock band, the presidents of the United States of America. And um, he has a really funny story about um, how he almost he, he had a brush, uh, almost killed Madonna's dog. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, but, uh, but anyway, you, you can really, <laughs> let's say when you read that story, you're really going to picture, yeah. um, uh, you know, yeah. what that was like. Um, anyway, so in addition to the book, I also have um, workshops and uh, coaching programs that essentially you know, they cover this terrain, but I, especially with the, the, um, the coaching clients that I work with, Mm -hmm. I can work with them on a variety of different things that, you know, will likely include storytelling, but Mm -hmm. also presentation coaching. So someone, um, could be getting ready for a Ted talk, um, or a, an investor pitch or, um, you know, a variety of other things. Also, you know, looking at, um, applying storytelling to internal, um, nice. you know, uh, com- you know, it, it, within companies to, to help teams communicate better. So there's many different mm-hmm. things you can do with, with storytelling. 
But yeah, I encourage you to check out the, the, the website and get in touch if uh, you want to have like a free, um, free meeting to discuss your needs. Yeah. And we'll definitely drop the links below. So you guys can easily just click on it and go through to Norman's book. I'm definitely buying your book. I think it's a great, great way to just get into storytelling. Norman, is there anything else that you can add to the audience from your site that I might've missed in my questions? Um, well, no, I think the, the, uh, for, from my site, did you say, or from your uh, side? Yeah. Like from my side, from my side. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think, I think the, the keep it simple right now, you know, just like keep, uh, you know, keep listening to Joy's podcast. It sounds like she's serving up, uh, you know, in, inspiration on a regular basis and, and has a great uh, community here. Um, and, uh, just be gentle with yourself, take care of yourself right now. Yeah. And, um, and, sure. you know, get, get a good night's sleep, you know, uh, eat, uh, you know, a balanced <laughs> diet, you know, kind of some of the, some of the basics right now, because I think that, um, you know, we're, we're in a kind of a historically, uh, challenging time and, um, and not to try to push yourself, uh, beyond your limits right now, that now is not the time to be like, I'm going to the moon, baby. You know, it's like, (laughs) Whoa, okay. I got to take care of myself, you know, and, and just know that everybody out there is, is doing it too. Yeah, it's very true. Actually, just yesterday I posted a salad that I was making on Instagram and Mm. just saying to people, one of the first success hacks is really just to look after yourself and eat healthy because, you know, feed your body and your mind with healthy things, healthy things comes out of you. So it's true. Oh, I'll give you one more. Sorry, one yes, one more trip it. in in yes. the storytelling uh, yes. arena is um, in addition to your origin story and developing some of that stuff. Um, I would encourage you to just um, open up a Google Doc or a Word Doc or even mm-hmm. a piece of paper and just write Story Bank at the top of it, mm-hmm. and um, start getting into the practice of collecting stories. And so, yeah. again, um, like I said before in that other exercise. Um, just write down a few phrases um, when something story worthy comes up. But if we don't do that, then they kind of get lost in the, me- uh, you know, in our, our memory banks. And um, there's story, mm-hmm. story worthy things happening to us all the time, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, so I just encourage you to start collecting your stories. Yeah, now that's, that is a great tip. And it's something that I do myself as well. And, and I call it just story inventory, but exactly the same concept. And yeah. another tip that I can add to Norman's one for the audience is that if you really feel like, oh, I don't have stories to tell, my life is boring, go through your photo albums. Like that's what I've done. I go through the photo albums, my school years and my childhood years. And it's amazing how things trigger you when you just see photos of your life. It's, yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And you don't need to have climbed Mount Everest to have great stories. Like, (laughs) you you know, people are interested in (laughs) big stories, but really little stories too, you know, like just uh, everyday stories. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Norman, this has been fantastic. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much for sharing all your golden nuggets with the audience. And definitely guys, go and check out Norman's links. It's, um, yeah, like I said, I'm definitely getting my hands on his book. So yeah, I recommend you guys do the same. Thank you so much, Norman. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Joy. It's been a pleasure to be here. I would say a joy to be here, but I'll bet people say that all the time. So. <laughs> that too, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs>